Hi, finally, hello. I've been away from YouTube for a couple of weeks, not by choice. It sucks because I was on such a roll with YouTube and then, I don't know, maybe it was rolling too quickly and the universe was like, stop. I didn't feel like I was like getting burnt out or anything, but maybe I was going to, maybe the universe thought it was helping, but it wasn't, not at all. I didn't talk a ton about the makeup that I was using in this video, so it will be all below if you're wondering. This was more of a story time, I guess, of what happened on my birthday and why I was unable to be on YouTube and will still be unable to come back to YouTube for a bit. Hopefully not too long. Thank you for sticking around. Oh, my hair is a different color. If you were wondering where I went, then you will find out the story by not turning off this video. When I haven't filmed in a while, I completely forget how to talk to myself. Where do I start? I think I've been away from YouTube for three weeks now, four weeks, which was not my intention. I guess there's like three, three reasons why I've been gone. Actually four. One of which I don't think I'm quite ready to share, but I will eventually. It's just really personal, emotional. Let's start with my very fun birthday. My birthday was on a Sunday, February 28th, and the man that lives downstairs was evicted. And we thought he was gonna be moving out on my birthday. I didn't really wanna be here for that, for reasons I won't share. I don't wanna talk bad about anybody. And so Luke rented us a little place up the mountain for a little birthday staycation. It was still winter here at that point. We had a hot tub, a snowy mountain. It was gonna be lovely, I'm sure. So we were supposed to go up on Friday after the kids are done school and we were gonna stay until Tuesday. We we're gonna pull the kids out of school on Monday so that they could do some snowboarding, figure skating. So I wake up on Thursday morning and I'm like, my eye kind of hurts. My right eye kind of hurts. And it's a little bit red. I have out of control histamine, terrible allergies all kind of relating back to my Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. I have been cursed with the fun reoccurrence of getting allergic conjunctivitis. My eye, if I get anything in my eye, a cat hair, something floating around in the air, it has the potential of turning into conjunctivitis. But also like, I don't know how to know if it's allergic conjunctivitis or like a conjunctivitis that's super contagious. But also my eye wasn't swollen. It's just a little bit red and a little bit uncomfortable. And I do struggle a lot with just having really dry eyes. So I threw in some drops and it felt okay. Like it felt a little bit better. I didn't think it was gonna be an issue. And so that night we were supposed to go to my mom's to have a little birthday dinner. I was gonna see my brother and my sister. But as time went on, my eye was starting to feel worse. And so I called my mom and I said, you know, I think I might have conjunctivitis. I don't know what kind. And we decided that it was probably best for me to not see everybody and so that was really sad i was really upset about that and i'm a crier so of course i had a little cry about it and i felt bad because my sister had made a cake my mom had already prepped dinner so my mom and brother actually came by and left dinner on my front door my sister came by brought a cake as they're such lovely humans i can't find a brush to blend out my concealer. So we have dinner. I'm feeling okay. My eye's not feeling so bad. And then as soon as I finished eating, I was like feeling like my eye was hurting quite a bit. So I got a warm compress, clean cloth, warm water, and I put it on my eye. I could literally feel my eye swelling, like rapidly. From the time that I went to the bathroom to put on the warm compress to like walking back out into the kitchen, my eye had almost swollen shut. This doesn't normally happen this way. When I went and looked at my eye, the like jelly that is over your eye was swollen. My actual eyeball was swollen and that really freaked me out and I couldn't see. And so we decided that I was gonna have to go to emergency 
because this is my time. There's no walk-ins open. I wasn't trying to like lose my eye or lose my vision or anything, so I didn't want to wait. So we go to the hospital, we wait about an hour to be admitted. And since I couldn't see, they were really freaked out and they couldn't see any like actual damage to my eyeball and they weren't really sure why it's swollen up so much, swelled up, swelled up so much. So immediately the doctor puts me in for a scan of my brain. I was like, why are we scanning my brain? But I guess she thought that it looked like something was actually pushing behind my eye, which was terrifying. And of course, with everything going on, I had to be all by myself. Luke couldn't come into the waiting room with me. He couldn't come into the doctor with me. Obviously he couldn't come into the scan with me because of the radiation. I was so scared and I was all alone. I had little sleeper earrings in my ears and I had to take them out for the scan and I have not been able to get them back in since then. Thank goodness the Tether Septum Jewelry is so easy to get in and out because if I would have had one of those like gnarly clickers that are so hard to undo, I would have been not having a good time. My skin is so dry and breaking out. It's gonna be that time of the month soon. I'm chalking it up to that and stress. Anyways, the skin comes back clear. There's nothing in my brain. There's nothing crazy going on with my sinuses. I assumed that they would probably put me on intravenous allergy medication because I said like I've got intense allergies. This is out of the norm, but like not surprising. But they said that they were just worried that there was some kind of infection and that they didn't want to miss that. And so they put me on intravenous antibiotics instead. And they put me on something pretty, pretty heavy. And they said, you know, this is probably gonna really upset your stomach might give you a headache. So of course, it upset my stomach and gave me a headache and really did not seem to help my eye. So this is Thursday night. We're supposed to go up the mountain on Friday evening. And at this point at the hospital, they have said this is not conjunctivitis. This doesn't look anything like typical conjunctivitis. So that made me think at least, you know, I'm not contagious. So the possibility of going up the mountain was still on the table. I was kind of thinking I could kind of go up there and relax, keep a warm compress on my eye, just do a little healing, but you know, still get out of my house, still celebrate my birthday. So my antibiotics drip is finished and I'm waiting for a long time for someone to come talk to me. And the doctor comes in and she's like, we need you to come back tomorrow. We're gonna leave your IV in and we're gonna do another round. She's like, and we want you to come back for a while. Like, we're gonna need you to come back for at least four days. So that would mean driving up and down the mountain about an hour down and an hour back up every day and spending, you know, most of the day at the hospital. So of course, being the dramatic Pisces that I am, my brain's like, well, guess you have to cancel. Probably not gonna get your money back. And I am not happy. Luke, my partner, is very positive. So he's like, maybe your eye will look better tomorrow. Maybe they'll put you on an oral antibiotic and we can go off as planned. And I'm like, no, that's not gonna happen for me. I knew something was going to happen because I have a birthday curse. Something always happens on or around my birthday for years. I think it might be because I do always feel a little bit depressed on and around my birthday. I don't know if that's a thing like birthday depression. I have a few reasons why I feel sad on my birthday that I'm not gonna share because I'll cry. And I just powdered my concealer. Birthday depression leads to unfortunate birthday events, which leads to even more birthday depression. So I guess it's kind of a, a vicious cycle. It's been three weeks and I still have bruises from where they couldn't get an IV into my arm. It ended up being, you can see a tiny dot, ended up being in the side of my wrist and they didn't want to have to do it again so I had to keep it in and I could not sleep with the needle in my wrist. It was so uncomfortable. So they told me to come back the next day and they said they couldn't really predict the best time to come back but they suggested we come in at about 10 a.m. So we get there bang on 10 a.m. and as soon as we walk into the waiting room it is so busy, like not enough chairs for everybody, kind of busy. So immediately they tell Luke to leave. He can't be in the emergency room at all. 
which is completely understandable. It was packed. And I had gone in thinking, you know, I already had my IV in. They already knew what medication I needed. They just needed to attach it and I could go well, after it was gone, of course. At this point, my eye is still swollen shut. Zero improvement. I was honestly expecting to be there for like half an hour to an hour tops, but that is not what happened. I don't want to sound ungrateful for the care I did receive. I understand that obviously other people in the emergency room were taking precedent over me. I wasn't necessarily an emergency. I just, you know, needed to get antibiotics. But it was still just not a fun time. So I think I waited in the waiting room for about an hour and 45 before they put me into the back to wait for a doctor. And they put me in the room that has like the eye equipment, like the big machine they can look at your eyes with. And I'm sitting there just waiting, waiting to see a nurse or a doctor. It's probably been about half an hour. And I'm like, my stomach hurts. Like my stomach really, really hurts. Like not a tummy ache. Like there's something wrong with my stomach. So I'm sitting in this room and I'm trying not to throw up. The pain has turned into like painful nausea and I'm burping up like acidic foam. Also not really surprising because I do have a lot of digestive issues that link back to EDS as well. Finally, a nurse comes walking into the room and he's kind of like, are you ready for your antibiotics? And I'm like, I'm gonna puke. So he grabs me one of those little cardboard, like looks like a French fry tray and I start puking into this piece of cardboard. It felt like lava. It was so painful. It burned my esophagus. It just, oh, it was awful. And so of course they're like, ooh, we can't give you antibiotics if you're feeling this sick. Please? I think that this was completely unrelated to the eye thing. I think it was just, <laughs> an unfortunate part of the birthday curse. In the room that I was in, there was no bed. There was just like this really tall chair. Made me feel really small because I couldn't touch the ground. I've broke my tailbone twice and it's really deformed and it causes me pain always. I've now been sitting for, you know, three hours. I'm throwing up acid, my eyes swollen shut, and now my tailbone is like throbbing with hot pain. But I'm not gonna ask for a bed. I know that there are people that need a bed more than I do. But then someone needed the eyeball room. So they moved me into a room with a bed and I like lay down and it feels so much better. The relief from the tailbone pain made me a little less stressed. It helped my stomach pain. I'm not really feeling like I have to puke so much anymore. Still puking though, just not quite as frequently. So I'm having a nice little lay down, feeling like I could even potentially fall asleep. So I'm tired from not sleeping the night before. And I think I was in that room for maybe four minutes tops when a doctor came in and said, we're really sorry, but somebody needs this bed. I was like, okay. I'm thinking they're gonna put me in another room somewhere maybe with a chair I don't know but there is no room for me so they give me like a plastic chair and they stick me in the hallway and again that's fine someone obviously needed the bed more than I did but now I'm just kind of out in the open I'm in so much pain and I'm throwing up into a cardboard tray where everyone can see me I just wasn't having a very good time so then I'm sitting puking, just feeling sick. It's probably been about four hours now. My kids need to be picked up at school at about three o'clock. Luke's been kind of hanging around nearby so that he could pick me up when I'm ready to go. I still haven't gotten antibiotics. You're probably gonna have to go get the kids without me and then come pick me up after, which is fine. It's not, that's not a big deal. Like I just really didn't expect to be there for that long. So I'm chilling in the hallway, just waiting for something to happen. And a nurse comes over and she says, have you had the pink lady drink yet? And I'm like, I don't know what that is, but no, I have not had any drink yet. She goes to get me this drink. I'm not entirely sure what it was. I think it was like, it tasted kind of like Pepto-Bismol, but she said it also had lidocaine in it. So it would numb, everything. It numbed my mouth, my tongue, my lips, my esophagus, and then my stomach. And the relief that I felt, wow. Like, I wish I would have had it sooner. But oh well, 
got it now, feeling great. I finally stopped puking. My tummy still hurts, but I don't feel like I'm gonna throw up. So instead of putting me on a drip, they decided just to use like a syringe and push my antibiotics in to kind of, I don't know, I think it's, it's quicker. The pain that I felt when those antibiotics were being pushed into my IV was so intense. But like, I'm not gonna say anything because I don't want, I don't want them to not get this over with. So I finally am getting my antibiotics. I'm gonna be able to leave. As soon as they're done and they give me the go ahead to leave, it's like 2.48 and I text Luke and I'm like, please tell me that you can come get me. And he's like, I just left to go get the kids. So I'm stuck at the hospital. It takes about 15 minutes to go get the kids and 15 minutes to get back to the hospital. It's half an hour. But I was so ready just to get out of that hospital that I just like broke down. I'm walking through the hallways to get to the waiting room, just falling. I just wanna get home. I wanna get into my bed and wallow. It was really just all these little things stacking on top of each other I just like, I was not dealing well. I was actually kind of happy at that point that my eye already looked messed up. I was wearing a mask and I don't think it was that obvious, but I was sitting in the waiting room crying. Also, it's not getting better at this point. So of course I need to go to the hospital again the next day and potentially spend another five hours in the hospital. So birthday trip up the mountain, like, it's, it's not happening. So Luke did cancel the place where we we're gonna go stay and the lady was lovely. She let us have a credit so we can eventually go back. But now the snow is melted, like there's not really anything happening at the ski hill. It was kind of the last weekend that I could go because I have so many sponsored jobs to do. Likely Makeup is launching a new product in a couple of months and I had all of this work to complete. And that was the weekend that I took off for my birthday to do that. And I was like, well, I guess we'll go next year, like being a brat. Side note, I got the NYX brow tint pen and this is the first time I'm trying it. And I'm really excited. I got the shade Ash Brown and it's literally the exact color of my eyebrow hairs. Tip is so fine. This is good. So of course I was told do not put makeup on your face. They said two to three weeks. I had so many deadlines for jobs and I did end up only wearing no makeup for two weeks. Probably could have went a little longer because my eye was still swollen, just a little bit. But now obviously it's back to normal. But with not being able to wear makeup, having a ton of sponsored jobs to film for, I like wanted so badly to get back on YouTube and just couldn't. I shouldn't even be filming this today. I should be filming a different project. But I really wanted to at least give you guys an update. When my actual birthday rolled around and I've got nothing planned, Luke's present to me was going up the hill. So he was feeling really bad that he didn't have something else to give me. Which I don't care about. But he was feeling bad. I love this. I struggle a lot with self-worth. And so Luke is a little bit upset. My kids are devastated. They want it to go really badly. And so I'm thinking, you know, this is my fault and I'm feeling so much guilt. I've ruined the weekend. I have no right to be feeling this upset about my birthday. I've ruined everyone else's weekend. And I'm just like, spiraling. My head is filled with shame and all of my little shame demons are telling me, you know, this is what you deserve. I'm spiraling and spiraling and it got to the point where I'm glad the kids weren't home at this moment because I was crying so hard that I was hyperventilating. I wouldn't have to deal with this birthday shit if I had never been born and saying that I wished I had never been born. In hindsight, it seems really dramatic, but in that moment, it felt, those were my feelings in that moment. I think I used like two full boxes of tissues and then I think I, I was just done. I was so 
tired at that point. I don't want to go back to the hospital, but I want this IV out of my arm. And Luke is being so comforting and so lovely and saying, you know, we can postpone your birthday. Like we can, we can do it another weekend, but I cannot hear that when I'm, you know, spiraling out of control like that. All I can hear is, you know, it's everything's terrible. Your life is terrible. It's, it just goes a hundred percent negative and I have a really hard time climbing out of that hole. But I finished the boxes of tissues. I finished the antibiotics at the hospital, got the IV out, got oral antibiotics, and I was still feeling sad. I'd had, you know, a pretty not fun birthday, but it kind of felt like it was over. Finally, such a long four days. I still, weeks later, feel so much guilt about the whole thing. And I know that that's kind of silly because it's not like I gave myself a swollen eye on purpose, but I have not quite yet defeated that shame, those self-worth issues, working on it. At least now I can recognize that that's what's happening. So those were three of the things that were keeping me away from YouTube. My eye, obviously, all the sponsored work that I've had to do, and Likely Makeup. Really excited about the Likely Makeup one. I cannot wait to show you guys what we're working on. This is the Salty Face Freckle Stain. In case you're wondering, it is currently my favorite freckle product. I think I'm gonna try the Master Matte Eyeshadow Palette by Makeup by Mario. Oh, you know what? There's actually another thing that's now preventing me from filming. It's spring break. If you don't already know this about me, I have two kids, Oliver and Maisie. Oliver's turning 11 soon and Maisie's turning eight soon. I film from home, my studio. <laughs> studio is just a corner of the living room. They are children, you cannot ask them to be quiet for long periods of time. So this video is gonna go up, but I wouldn't probably expect another one for a while. I might be able to squeeze in like a musical makeup tutorial, like a makeup therapy. Hopefully if I can finish all my sponsored stuff. I'm just so thankful that I have sponsored stuff right now because my YouTube AdSense, when I don't post for a while, it drops to nothing. But the sponsored job saved my butt. All my sponsored stuff is Instagram stuff. So if you're not following me there, that's where you can find me. I kind of love this eyeshadow. I feel like it's like tying my hair color to the color of my dress. I think this palette might stay on my desk. This has a lot of essentials. Spring break is two weeks. So after this week and next week, then I should be done most of the sponsored stuff and I can come back to uploading lots on YouTube. It was hard to feel motivated as well because after spiraling like that and really sinking into a pretty hefty state of depression, I was stuck there for a while. My eyes stayed swollen shut for a solid week. It was painful. Also not to mention that the oral antibiotics I had to take made me sick. And then the other thing that I'm not quite ready to share will also help you to understand why I've been sad, struggling, still struggling. I feel like I don't really share a lot of personal stuff on here. I pretty much talk about makeup. I guess I don't really know if that's even something that people are interested in, I guess. Or at least that's what I tell myself. Because being vulnerable is so scary. And talking about this, having a swollen eye and being really sad about it is really hard to share. This mascara is so good. It's the Beauty Care Naturals Lengthening Mascara. Love it. I feel like my eyelashes were definitely thriving from not wearing makeup for so long. They were just free to grow and live their life naked. I think I'm actually gonna put mascara on the bottom lashes. Never do, and I always regret it. You could definitely leave this eye at this, but 
um, a lash gel. I think I'm gonna use the Bold Face Bring It On Lash, but I wanna show you guys a trick. This is a lash applicator from Likely Makeup. It has our little logo on it. These are box openers. If you're a makeup person, you know that boxes are the worst. It's like they're made for opening makeup boxes. Even like getting the product out, I'm gonna cut it oh, just over half. Oh yeah. Also, Bold Face, their new super sticky lash glue is all I've been using. It is definitely my new favorite. I love the little plastic doe foot applicator. I love the formula. It's so easy to use. It's so sticky. My favorite thing about this glue is that you don't have to wait a really long time for it to get tacky. You just stick it right on. Just using my box opener to put on my lash. I'm trying to think of a really clickbaity title for this video. <laughs> Why I was forced to leave YouTube. How about that? That sounds really dramatic. It's not a lie. Bit of an embellishment. I don't think I could actually do that. This eye makeup feels very like 2018 to me. I wanted to do a bold lip, but I think I would rather keep it kind of chill. Have you guys tried the NYX Shine Loud glossy, whatever these are. Have you tried these yet? They do everything they claim to do. They literally don't transfer. Like I could slather this on and let it dry and kiss a white pillowcase, nothing. But I don't know why I would kiss a pillowcase. This is the shade Magic Maker and I have been obsessed with it. It's like my lips, but better. The gloss is not transfer proof, but the lip color is completely. I just actually bought it in red because you never know when you're gonna need a transfer proof red. That is not even. I almost wish it was a little bit oranger. I'm gonna tap a little bit of yellow and orange blush onto it. Look at that, we completely switched up the color. So cute. And since we've got it here, we might as well add a little bit more blush. <laughs> Obviously. This is so unnecessary, but I just want to kind of wing the eye out a little bit more. So I'm going to use maybe this one. <laughs> this is definitely something that should be done before lashes. Doing it now. Like you can't see it, but you can see it. That turned out cute. I hope this video wasn't boring, whiny. I don't know what. I hope you enjoyed the video. I don't know if enjoyed is the right word when I'm talking about shitty situations. How about I'll just say thank you for being here and I will see you in the next video.